What is up guys? This is going to be a short introduction to cross-site scripting. It's a type of vulnerability represented with the acronym XSS. So what is cross-site scripting? It's basically the ability to execute arbitrary JavaScript on a user's browser. And the implication of that is we technically have access to the user's session and all of the information and authentication associated with that. So usually we find the severity of a cross-site scripting attack is directly correlated to the types of permissions that a user has. So an extreme example would be in the context of some sort of banking application, for example, whereas at the other end of the spectrum, if it's just a regular brochure style website with no session or user login, well, there are still certain attacks that can be launched via cross-site scripting, but the severity is likely to be a lot lower in that second instance. So here in this lab, we have an example of cross-site scripting. The goal of this lab, it says to solve the lab, perform a cross-site scripting attack that calls the alert function. Now, this is a type of reflected cross-site scripting, and this means that it's going to reflect the attack directly based on the most recent HTTP request. This is different from something like stored cross-site scripting, where perhaps the cross-site scripting attack is stored in a database and then launched later when a user visits a certain page. Here, the attack's going to be reflected directly as a result of the HTTP request we send to the application. So notice on this blog page, we have the option to search the blog. And if we just input a search term, we'll call it my search term and choose the search option. Notice that the exact search term we input into the search box is reflected to the page, my search term. Now in terms of the way the application should deal with this, first of all, when we input our search term, the backend should make sure that it's not allowing certain special characters, like HTML tags, for example, which are also script tags. And the other way of mitigating this type of attack is when the data is returned to the page, it should be encoded so that these special tags would not be passed by the browser anyway. They would just be reflected directly to the page. Now we've been put some H1 tags there. Let's just take a look at the page source. In fact, we'll inspect that element directly. And notice that H1 tags have actually been injected into the page. That's why my search time is appearing on a second line because H1 is a block level element. Now this is not really the attack itself because the idea here is to execute a script, JavaScript in this case, but this is just to indicate that the page is not handling those special tags correctly. We should not have those H1 tags returned as part of the HTML. We should actually see the H1 tag on the page or maybe the search box doesn't even accept those H1 tags or HTML tags to begin with. So we can see there's a clear problem with this page. Now, given that it's not handling those characters correctly, we can actually attempt to input a script tag. So in the context of a HTML document, this by default is going to refer to JavaScript. Now the goal of the lab was to use this specific JavaScript function alert, which is just going to pop up an alert box to the page. So let's search for that. And you can see we have our alert box popping up, which means rather than handling those script tags correctly, it's actually directly injecting them into the document and the browser is now executing that JavaScript. Now it can sometimes take a moment to understand the implication of this because what have we really done here? We've just popped up an alert box for ourselves. So how would this work in the context of an attack? Well, the idea is you can include this as part of a URL. If you notice in the search bar above, we actually have this search parameter and we could send a user this kind of link. And if they didn't really understand what they were looking at, if they just clicked on this link, for example, we're now executing JavaScript on the browser of the user. And obviously we wouldn't just be popping up an alert. We would try to launch some kind of attack using JavaScript. So here as part of the URL, we see we get the same result. So if a user was to click on that URL, they would also get this JavaScript executed on their browser. And you can see now we've solved this specific lab, which was a reflected cross-site scripting attack. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Hope you found it helpful.